I'm Quinton Martins, the project manager of the Cape Leopard Trust, based in the Western Cape in South Africa. We're um, in the Cedarburg Mountains, uh, about 200 kilometers north of Cape Town, in one of the most awesome remote wilderness areas in Africa. Well, we're going to head out um, and check some of the leopard traps that we've got set. We don't have a signal for either of the cages. It's going to be a bit of a, a mission this morning. <laughs> We're ready. We're trying to recapture one male leopard here, which we've been trying for a while now, and uh, it's been very frustrating because the collar, the collar bombed out soon after we put it on. Well, it took us five months to get him the first time. Collared him, and then the bat, the collar bombed out after seven months. It took us another six months to recapture him for the second time and um, the collar bombed out a week after we put put it on. So it's been a long haul. <laughs> it's a bit disappointing when the cages are down and it's not a leopard. <laughs> We've got one of the female leopards that are collared, Lizzie the leopard. We're going to be trying to track her. She's got a new, um, new type of collar on which we haven't been able to get a download from her yet. The project was initiated as a predator conservation program using the leopard as a flagship species, an umbrella species which would really help us deal with all aspects of environmental conservation in, in this area. The leopard being the apex predator in the Western Cape where large predators like hyena and lion have been killed off over the last couple of hundred years, the leopard is like right on top there now and everything else beneath it gets affected by its presence or absence. So conservation of a species like this is really important. The project is quite broad in the sense that you know one looks at um, various ecological issues like looking at prey densities etc. But it's got a, a very important wi uh, human wildlife sort of element um, where um, education plays an important role. Now we're fortunate enough to be able to expand the project into different areas of South Africa and also to incorporate um, an educational component which looks at educating of children in South Africa from the communities as well as um, from the cities, from schools internationally as well. I like to incorporate the artistic as well as the scientific and kind of bring them together. So for me, uh, the aim with these children is that through being out here, through the experiences that we do, that they form a kind of connection with this, with this place, or with wilderness, with wild places, with, with nature. With the leopard captures, and that, you know, you've got a lot of expectations and a lot of hope. We don't, for instance, bait cages and that sort of thing, so um, a lot of the, the trapping techniques are you, based on putting a trap out there and knowing that when a leopard walks past or walks through that area, there's a very good chance that you're going to catch it. But the, they've got such massive ranges here that the chances of them actually getting to that spot, you know, one can't really determine that. And it's, uh, we don't know when it will be and how long it takes and that. And yeah, it's quite frustrating at times. He's got a massive range of over a thousand square kilometers. So it's like, um, it's difficult to try to trap one of these guys out in this area. You know, it's just such a difficult terrain. The project exists primarily on donor funding. Um, we don't get government, any government funding at all. The information gleaned from a project like this, you know, and being able to share that with the farmers was absolutely essential. The perception that, that farmers often had out here was that, you know, there were more leopards than, than there really are. Um, the perception that, you know, when they found spur out on their, their, their land that, you know, this was one of 10 or leopards on their farm, you know, but actually what, what it turns out is, is that, you know, in many um, instances it was one leopard that was covering many farmers' farms, you know, up to over a thousand square kilometers 
for one territorial male leopard, which is just outrageous, you know. And it just, what it ultimately means is that the population is, it's a very low density population. And, and by removing individuals from that population, it, um, it's a major threat to their existence. Well, for me, I mean, I must say that it's just been the most incredible thing to actually see change happening, to see farmers in an area like this in 170,000 hectares say, well, we are going to ban the use of leg hold traps. We're going to ban hunting. Um, we're going to embrace conservation here. Yeah. And suddenly, you know, after six months, invite you into their homes, invite your principles into their homes, your ideals about preserving and conserving wilderness to, you know, really do that throughout um, wherever we can reach. My mission in life is to, to really, you know, help people and help the environment, help people connect with the environment and see things happen where they can actually see the beauty of life. Um, and this is where you see it.